Hey, it's comfy, all right? It's comfy. It's comfy. And it's warm. And who knows? I might be bringing sexy back. That's right, y'all. It's comfy and it's warm. Hey, folks, Lester here. And thank you for joining me on Lunch with Longhorn Lester Live. I am coming from StreamYard. Uh, that's who this is powered by. We're blessed to have them because what they can do is take all of the channels and bring them all into one location. A lot of times when we go live on location, uh, we can't use StreamYard. So we're forced to only go live on Longhorn Lester Facebook or only on I'm a Survivor YouTube. And so what happens is a lot of folks who don't keep up or don't follow all of the platforms are at a disadvantage. They don't get to see everything. And so we we try not to be exclusive to one or the other. And so StreamYard is the best way for us to be able to go live because it does allow the live to be shared by everybody. So no one's missing out on anything. Now, like I said, when we're on location, like at the JNL or different places, you can't use StreamYard from your phone. It, it's very difficult. You can, but it's very difficult. It works a lot better from a laptop or a computer, which is what I'm using right now. But um, uh, anyway, it's it's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you all for joining me. I see, I do see the glare you're talking about from the light shining down. Uh, it looks like it might be something divine. I'm just saying let the light shine let your light shine and there's a light shining down on me and i love it okay i will take it no i'm not filtered i am i am i'm not filtered i still have the same wrinkles i always have you just caught me earlier in the day instead of later in the day and that collagen facial that i had about two weeks back is still holding strong so i'm blessed for that uh barbara says where's lester where is lester so, Barbara, just so you know, whenever you start, this is not just for Barbara. I'm not picking on you, Barbara. Uh, but whenever you start a live, you go in and you have to set it up. And there's a whole lot of steps to setting everything up. And then I will finally try to start it as close as I can. The actual live, I will start it as close as I can to the uh, hour uh, lots of cornholio questions how's cornholio cindy wants to know how's cornholio so oh, renee whoops renee renee how'd you do that cindy says how's cornholio so i will say that cornholio is doing fine y'all let's go ahead and in case you have not seen it yet or in case you're not a double d some of y'all are not double D's, and I just don't know why. You have, a ch you have a chance to be a double D, and you choose not to. Double dipper is what I call those who watch both Facebook and YouTube. Uh, but some people don't. And if you haven't had a chance to see it yet, today's Survivor Series video was about our beloved Cornholio. And uh, it was a long video, and I tried to cut things out where I could, and but still include enough. And I found out this morning from reading comments, I did not do enough. There was a lot more you needed to know about Cornholio. So I made a part two. Tomorrow morning, you will be seeing a part two to the Cornholio story. So bear with me on that one. Um, I don't think that's what you wanted to hear because you, you just want to know all the animals and you want to know it now. I get that, y'all, but this is a lot of work on me, okay? And I'm trying my best. I've been doing four of these now. Let's talk. Let's think about it. So our very first one was I'm a gene. That is the namesake behind the sanctuary. I'm a gene, our donkey who survived, uh, our, our lone surviving donkey from the Hurricane Harvey flood. Uh, she's still with us. Then we did Ringo, who I would say is probably our most popular of animals like i said in my video you can google ringo the goat and you're going to find a hundred videos of ringo he has just been the most popular of all of our babies um the third one that i worked on was bucky's bucky's the little horse uh, jamie's birthday gift from her second year and then finally yesterday was cornholio the cornholio video was timely 
because Cornholio was involved in a very recent uh, dog attack. I will play a snippet of that video right now in case you haven't seen it. Guys, what I'm not going to do is call out people. We're not going to do that this year. I'm going to give you the facts of what happened, but we're not going to make the video about bashing people. That's what we're, we're going away from that. We are no longer going in that direction. We're no longer going in the direction of throwing people under the bus just to make ourselves look better. Okay. And I will say this, and I'm going to try to stick to it. I think that we've all been guilty of sometimes, you know, maybe throwing someone under the bus or so to say, because we don't like a farm practice or a personal life practice or whatever. I think we've all been guilty of it. We've all been thrown under the bus in life. I know all of you guys have been there and we're going to try so hard. I told you guys back before the new year, we're going to try to start off on a new foot and really get this page back to its glory days where it was full of love and laughter and joy and kindness. And those haters, those pee pats who only want to bring us down, they're going to find out real fast they're on the wrong page because not only will Jamie and I and Jamie's mom who helps us moderate the channel going to squash that stuff as fast as we can, but we're hoping that you will also squash it. Not You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be mean. We just want to let people know that this is not the place for you to go off and bash people, us or, or anybody else, okay? So let me go ahead and show you that snippet with Cornholio, and then we'll talk more about that little fella. Hey folks, Lester here, and uh, today I'm hanging out with the great Cornholio, and I just wanna put this out there. I'm going to say that of all of the survivors who we've been blessed to work with and love and try to care for, he is by far and this is my opinion, but he is by far the ultimate survivor. And when I say ultimate survivor, not only has he had to survive vicious dog attacks, and I say that in the plural because he has, but he's also had to survive heartbreak, loss, and so many other things and uh, he's had to undergo and overcome so much in life more than what most of you guys know about so yes the uh the video that played this morning on facebook and will play this afternoon on youtube does show uh a recording of a of a dog of dogs getting after Cornholio. Uh, those dogs got after him right there on the property. Uh, it started out there in the backyard around the barn, and then it moved around to the front yard. Uh, I'm so happy that Ellie and Megan were vigilant. They heard the commotion. They ran out. They put a stop to it before Cornholio was seriously hurt. But what we're not doing is necessarily calling out and blaming this person or blaming that person or blaming this because we all know we we all know that animals act on their instincts they can sometimes be just wanting to play and especially dogs can sometimes get to playing and they play too rough or they end up and so we are we're not in the business of, of calling people out. And so it's not important that you identify uh, whose dogs were who and what they need to do with their dogs and what you would have done and what Ellie should have done and what Megan should have done. What we're saying is Cornholio is safe for now. Cornholio lives a very risky lifestyle, the same as many of us do. For any of you sitting there now with a cigarette in your mouth, you know you're living, you're playing with fire. For those that take that dip of tobacco and they spit it out all day, or for those that have unprotected sex, I don't know. We, we, we all are guilty of not always thinking about the future, even though we know 
what we should do. We don't always do that. The things that we'll have for lunch here in the next few minutes, some will swing by and have things that, that they know is no good for them. And so I'm guilty of that as well. And so we know that Cornholio is an outside, a free ranging bird. And I've been very open and allowing you to vent if you choose to vent in your comments. And there are a lot of people that would love to see Cornholio in a run or in a coop. But I'm telling you that Cornholio is a free spirit. He's a free spirit. He's always been a free spirit. And that's the lifestyle that he wants to live. He would not be the same Cornholio if we were to take him and put him into a 10 by 10 stall or a 10 by 12 run. He would not. He would be confined. He would pace the walls. He would not be happy. Would he live an additional X number of days or months or years? Probably so. But would he be happy during those years? And the answer is no. The answer is no. He's a free spirit, as are most turkey species. I want you to think back to if you ever had a grandpa or an uncle or maybe yourself, you had a farm. How many of y'all, I'm looking for hand hands to be raised or comments here how many can remember the farm turkey chasing you around the farm how many can remember that at all of those farms there may have been a turkey or two and every time you went over to visit you had to run from the turkey y'all that's what farmers do with their turkeys they do not coop them now if they are a meat turkey they're being raised Look at all the hands raised. Thank you so much for reminding people that that is a turkey's lifestyle. Is it the safest of lifestyles? Absolutely not, because predators do happen. Uh, neighborhood dogs do happen. Family dogs do happen. Um, but you take that free spirit and you cage him and you've pretty much given him a death sentence right there. And he'll die here a lot faster than he'll die physically. And I'm sorry if that doesn't make sense to you, but that's that's the bottom line is, and that's, that's the way we're going to stick to this. And if you want to be upset with Lester on that decision, then you can be upset with Lester. But um, we can't clip his wings or else that's going to prevent him from flying up and getting higher off the ground when he needs to. And turkeys can't have their wings clipped or it does prevent them from being able to get away from predators. Uh, a lot of that flapping is also a deterrent to scare away predators. Also, the wingspans, a way to make him bigger, is another deterrent to make predators more less likely to choose him as an easy target. Um he does have a place that where he roosts that night. And then uh, for a lot of folks saying he's not safe at night, y'all, that happened in the broad daylight. That video happened in broad daylight. So let's not find anyone to blame. We just know that there are some animals that live a very li risky lifestyle. The same way there are many of us who live just as risky a lifestyle. We gamble with our health. Every time we pick up a phone to text while we're driving, we do things all the time that we know we shouldn't do. We're putting our lives at risk, and yet we do them anyway. So I'm not saying that it's right, but what I am saying is Cornholio, just like Pablo, just like a lot of our animals, they, they do live life on the edge. They, are, they live life on the edge. Cornholio is also at a second disadvantage because he does like to wonder. He uh, enjoys following the peacocks around. And so whenever our peacocks will fly, and they do fly, they fly from our place over to Uncle Dan's, or they fly over to my mom and dad's, or they fly over to Sister Kim's. Cornholio watches them, and even though he can't fly along with them, he'll start walking over there. He just wants to be around with those of his kind. And so I feel horrible for Cornholio. I don't like seeing what I saw yesterday, but I am happy that Ellie and Megan were there this time. Will they be there every time? No. They're, so they won't. And so, um, so yes, I, I, I can't read uh, what you're saying. I just, I think that I'm seeing a lot of things about Cornholio being the ultimate warrior and, um, 
And so, yes, we we love Cornholio. He's been with us since 2020. So at least three years, I believe it was June the 2nd of 2020. It was just before Jamie's birthday. And so Cornholio was Jamie's third birthday gift from me to her. It was another rescue. First, it was Annie Bananis, uh, Annie our alpaca. And then it was Bucky's in year number two. And Cornholio was her year number three. Uh, a lot of people have had fun in the comments trying to name all of the lady friends that Cornholio has had the pleasure of getting to know better. <laughs> and he has had a number of lady friends, more lady friends than a lot of people. And if you think that it's going to take lady friends to keep him home, well, that's not always true either. Uh, if you think that getting him a male partner might help, uh, Cornholio just wants to be around other birds and he'll find his way in and out of the, of his paddock, of his pasture. And luckily he's made it this long, even though he has undergone several dog attacks, he's, he's still going y'all. He's still going. How many lives does Cornholio have? Nine lives? I don't know, but, um. We love him, but even as we do love him, we know that he lives a very risky lifestyle, and there's not a lot we can do with him. The um, uh, final thing that I'll say we're not going to do is uh, there have been people who have insisted that he be sent off to a bird sanctuary. But guys, let's not forget that what we call sanctuary is not what everyone refers to as sanctuary as a matter of fact if you look at a lot of dog rescues you can call them a rescue if you want to but what you're going to find is a building much like the shop here around me full of nothing but caged animals uh cyclone fencing <sighs> cages y'all just it's just nothing different than going to a dog pound there are people that call it a dog rescue and um, we're not going to send Cornholio off to be put into a cage. We're not going to do that. So it's like a doggy jail. Someone says most rescues are nothing more than a glorified dog jail where you have cages stacked on top of cages, on top of cages. And you can call it a rescue because you may have saved them from the street. Or you can call it your rescue because you saved them from you know, being euthanized at the shelter. But in case you can find a rehome for them where they can actually live a dog's life, I, 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 I think we may disagree. We may argue and fight back and forth about what is their best life. So you admire people for getting into rescue. You know, it's expensive. It's, it's uh, not easy, but it's, it's uh, we're, we're treading on really thin ice here talking about things that are going to be so people are going to be so charged over. And so I might be wise to just avoid that. But I will say that Cornholio is fine. As of this morning, he's fine. I will have part two of his Survivor series story tomorrow, Saturday, uh, where, I'll, where I will address things that I did not address in part one. OK, I've been trying to keep those fairly short. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this also why I'm why I have you uh, YouTube folks. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you guys are devoting about 10 minutes to the videos, which confirms. What everyone has always said that YouTubers are more of your long video people, whereas Facebookers seem to be a little bit less they have i'm just gonna say they have less time on their hands and i do not speak for everybody but i'm saying in general you may be lucky to get three minutes out of a facebook video even though it may be 12 or 13 or 14 minutes long people are averaging about three minutes on facebook however you're getting closer to 10 minutes on your youtube and so Longer is better, says Black Diamond. <laughs> 
Black Diamond says longer is better. And I'm certain that Black Diamond is referring to the length of videos. She likes the longer ones, not the shorter ones. Uh, so thank you, Black Diamond, for reaffirming what I what I the point that I was trying to make. Um, we take pride in still trying to hold out uh, and make longer video content. But I also know it's a dying breed. Yesterday, a fella on Facebook, uh, I actually recorded. Hold on. <laughs> Y'all want to see something funny? Do y'all want to see something funny? Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Hold on. Just give me a second here. Uh, I should have had, I should have stuff like this already up and ready to go. And sometimes I don't. Um, where in the world did I leave it? Boy, it was hilarious. Oh, I know where it's at. I sent it. There we go. All right, hold on. This is going to be funny, y'all. I'm not making fun of the individual, okay? I am not making fun of the individual. But what I am going to do is show you a very valid point that this person shared with all of us. Yet, I know for a fact that this is the same sentiment shared by so many people. All right, let me open this up for y'all. I love the way I can sh swap and share back and forth between my Facebook. I'm sorry, my internet. Here we go. I'm going to pause it right there. So, Mr. Scott, Mr. Scott, this I'm not trying to disrespect you or embarrass you at all. But a Mr. Scott is a top fan, which means that we have no we have we have no control of that Mr. Scott. So that's something that you earned by the amount of time that you spend watching our videos. And we appreciate that. But look what Mr. Scott said, especially towards the bottom. I thoroughly enjoyed this. So thank you for the compliment, sir. It's nice to have the focus on one animal at a time to be able to find out their history or what y'all know about their history. Okay, so thank you. Uh, and then he says, then this is where it gets kind of interesting. And this is why I'm sharing this, Mr. Scott. It's not to dis to embarrass you or disrespect you. But I actually admire you for telling me what I've kind of always known about Facebook. He says, 10, 11 minutes is the perfect time. And then he says, I miss many of your videos because when I start a video, if I click on it and it says 18 or more minutes long, Nine times out of 10, I'll just pass it by. Okay. So I jokingly, and I made sure it was a joke because I put LOL and smiley faces. That guarantees you that it was a joke. I replied and I says, Mr. Scott, I says, with all due respect, you are too old to be a part of that on-demand TikTok community. <laughs> You're a Facebooker and a YouTuber, sir. Now, that means you need to watch some longer videos and stop trying to do all that scrolling, s clicking left and swapping right and all that nonsense, okay? But now, can we be honest? So I have picked on Mr. Scott, even though, Mr. Scott, I am not picking on you. I am not. I love you, and I respect your opinion. But could I find out over here in the comments on the side over here where I'm reading all the comments from both Facebookers and YouTubers, is it true? Is it true that you will start a video and start watching it, but when you realize how long it is, you decide to go ahead and go watch somebody else who has a shorter video? And if it is true, then what I'm going to tell you here may be a little bit hard to hear, but uh, there's absolutely a place for you short, short video people on Facebook. As a matter of fact, Facebook is changing. The the dynamic and the face of Facebook is changing to accommodate you. Uh, it is. YouTube, however, is saying we're not going to alter what's made us who we are. And what made YouTube who they are is the fact that people go there for their entertainment either their morning entertainment, their nighttime entertainment. They like to invest themselves in longer videos. So you cannot, you have to understand why you have some channels that are saying, okay, 
fine. If I'm only going to get people to watch three minutes on Facebook, then I'm going to go out there and record a three minute video and you get what you get. And that's because of the folks who cannot hardly stand to invest more time than two or three minutes a day on a video on your video. And then if you are the kind of person who says, but I like the longer videos, I like the longer videos. I'm just letting you know, you're going to have to find a way to eventually evolve over to YouTube because the short, the longer videos on Facebook are dying. They will shadow ban a creator who refuses to follow their best practices and a best practice on Facebook is to give people short, 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 short videos recorded in this mode, up and down, up and down, up and down. And they want those videos to be as close to real time as possible. So anybody who wants to excel and do well in the Facebook community has to adhere to what the Facebook community says are their best practices and those are very short videos recorded up and down now don't be mad at the messenger y'all don't be mad at the messenger because if we were to if we were to run a business and i continued to sell shrimp even though no one ate it that would be a foolish thing to do if i was running a business and i continued to include <sighs> a Caesar salad, even though most people wanted burgers, then that would be a foolish thing to do. I would end up losing money because I would be buying things that nobody wants. And so ultimately, us who, us who create on Facebook and YouTube are finding it harder and harder to make everybody happy. So you've heard it from me. If you like the longer videos, you really should find somebody who can help you learn to create a YouTube channel. It's free. It costs you nothing. Even though they call it a subscriber, that just means that you subscribe to their channel. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. And uh, that's where you're going to continue to find your longer video content. But uh, if you do like the little short stuff and you like to have a boom, 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 Lester, give me the jest and I'm moving on. I got other channels to watch. I got things to do. I can't spend time with you because I got things to do. Then uh, you are, in fact, probably finding yourselves um, in a dying on a dying channel when it comes to long video creators. Don't worry. There's a whole lot of people who can make those short videos. I'll say one last thing and then I'll get off of it. People are demanding to hear about animals. I want to hear about animals. I want to hear about animals. Stop talking business. Well, our business is animals, but our business is also Facebook and YouTube, that's how we're able to give our animals their best life. And so I want you to think about the skill that is required for someone to entertain you for a longer period of time compared to just any Tom, Dick, or Harry grabbing his phone and recording something and calling himself a video creator. Every single one of you have a video somewhere or you had a video somewhere that was of viral content it was it was a video that was worthy of viral content something you saw your kids doing something you caught your dog doing something you caught you, your partner doing uh, something you saw on the street you catch or you see things happening every single day that's worthy of sharing on the internet and giving you your literal literally your 10 15 seconds of fame, but those kinds of channels can never make a living off of the internet because they, you, if you want to make a living off the internet, you have to be able to have a channel that provides ads and advertising. So anyway, I've talked long enough about Facebook and YouTube and the differences of, we've already talked about Cornholio. We talked about my dress code today and how I'm trying to bring sexy back, which is not the, not the case. I'm joking about that, obviously. I am here in the shop. Uh, Jamie's not here. Um, 
I am just doing my morning chores. It's a very rainy day. And so I will be making my way over to the JNL property momentarily. Uh, what I love, and I don't have them with me, or do I? So I have my new goggles, y'all. I have my new goggles. They're actually linked to my phone. They're made by Ray-Ban, but they partnered with Meta. And Meta is the new Facebook. And so you can actually go live using my goggle phones, which I've done that twice already. I've had a lot of fun using them. There are still a couple of kinks that I have to work out. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to get them to record longer videos in just one minute. Uh, they will record an entire live. Yeah, they're, they look like goggles. They do look like goggles. They're pretty thick, and they have to be. They have a recording device built into them. So uh, a lot of people, <laughs> little spoon spectacles. Yeah, so my uh, my brother, Uncle Dan and Lou, are trying to put together a time machine. Not a time machine, a time what do you call that thing? A time, a time capsule. They want to do a time capsule and they've asked everyone to bring over something from this year, something that's relevant to your life this year and put it in their time capsule. And they're going to open that time capsule up in 10 years. And, uh, I says, I joke, I says, y'all know that no one's going to be around in 10 years. No, I think that we'll still be around, but you will not be around. You will not be around in 10 years if you think that you will be. Now, you will still be alive. I know you'll still be alive, but I promise you that you're not going to be around on these channels. The channels are very dynamic. Um, all of us get an analytics of um, our channels. And if you, I don't think that you know the turnover ratio, how fast people join a channel and then leave a channel many times it's by mistakes there's a sometimes you leave a channel by mistake and don't realize it uh, you click an x if you if you don't have time to watch a video there's an x in the right hand corner of facebook videos but if you click it what you're doing is actually leaving that channel not leaving the video you're leaving that channel and so there have been so many people who've messaged says, hey, I didn't know y'all were still around. I didn't know y'all still made videos. Well, it's because you clicked the wrong X. <laughs> Instead of just skipping the video, you X'd out of the channel. And so you lose the channel. So it's no longer going to show up on your Facebook feed. You're going to end up finding new channels and they will end up occupying your time. So uh, someone says, I'll still be around. I'll still be around. You might, you might, I think that you'll be around. I don't think that you're all going to pass on us in the next 10 years. I hope to God not. But uh, if you could look at the names, here's an example. Jamie posted a video a little bit ago. It was a reel that we made a year ago. It was a year memory. It was the one where I was dancing by the tractor and I did the hay slide, which was just for fun. It was comical. It was, it was just me being goofy. It, you caught me on a goofy day. And you wouldn't believe when I was reading those comments on the original video from a year ago, my mouth dropped because I was seeing all of these names of people who a year ago were a very large part of I'm a Survivor and our video content. They were the names that you see all over the place on all of these videos. And I'm sitting there saying, hey, whatever happened to, and all of these names that I recognized from a year ago, guys, and there's so many names that are gone. And I'm thinking, what happened? Where did they go? They're like, they were really big into the channel. And so I think I know what happens. I think that over time, people find new channels, different channels, things that offer them a little bit more entertainment. Uh, bang for their buck and so they begin to evolve and move around and so i'm not upset with that i'm not mad about it i was trying to revitalize i'm a survivor by offering some survivor series uh, to get some of those people back 
But I realize now that the same people watching those videos are the same ones who've been here forever, not the ones who were here and then left. So it is what it is. You know, it's a, we're testing the waters. Is that the right word to use? I want you to remember this. The internet has only been around for so long. And then video creators have only been doing what we do for, I would say, about the last five or six years, ever since they came up with something called ad revenue. Um, and so Facebook Watch, you all know about Facebook Watch. That was their attempt to get into sort of what YouTube was doing by playing long videos. And so a lot of people joined up and began to make videos during that time. And most of those channels are gone now. Think about it. Most of those channels don't last more than a year or two. And they end up losing their steam. And they just kind of like wash it. They, they go away. The same way TV shows you may see on TV, sitcoms, or, you know, different shows you may watch, different seasons you may watch on Hulu or Netflix. And at some point, even though you really enjoy the series, you're enjoying these episodes after episode. And then you wait, wait a minute. They're not going to renew the season. They're not going to renew the, ep you know, they're not going to renew the, the show and shows will die out. And what happens is those shows will die out because people will begin to lose interest. And as the numbers drop and begin to decline, those folks who make those movies realize they're not profitable anymore. They're not making any money and you can't continue to make a video or a movie in this case and have, you know, no one watch it. So that's how they die out and they go away. And so we also know as video creators that, uh, on a relatively new platform, the internet, no one knows how long a channel can survive. No, no one knows um, no one knows how long this is going to be possible for us. So we've been going for about six years, which I think is pretty neat, uh, to be able to do this for that long. And, but, but I do every, every year when we get our analytics and we look at the drop off, the drop off, the drop off, the drop off. And then it's not uncommon, no matter who you talk to with the Cog Hills or the arms family or, or anybody else that you may follow, we all experience the same loss. We're all experiencing that same drop off. And even if a channel is still growing, the amount of the, the, how slow the growth is, is troubling because that's the indicator of a channel in decline. So Who's to say who will be around in 10 years? But if Daniel and Lou do put a time capsule into the ground, I think that I may take me a little spoon. Maybe I'll take this particular cap with the little spoon and put it inside that time capsule. And so in 10 years, when we dig that thing up, if you are still around, I'll just put my cap on and let all of the memories flood back. I'll just let all these memories flood back of this time when you all thought it was so funny to give me a hard time about being a little spoon once that happened once, maybe, maybe, maybe twice, maybe twice. So, but that is what I will put into the time capsule, this hat with this spoon, and we'll see how it rides out the 10 years being buried there somewhere on Morrow Hill. But um, no, everything is going fine with the animals. Cornholio is up and about today. Don't worry. I'll show you more of that video tomorrow so you can see how he's doing. He's going to be fine. Uh, I think it was mostly just a loss of a lot of feathers. That um, uh, So I will address this one lady that keeps saying it was my dogs. Lady, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Those were not my dogs. In my video... Me and my dogs did show up to the aftermath and me and my dogs did walk around and record all of the feathers, but those were not my dogs that got Cornholio yesterday. You need to watch the video closer. We're not going to sit here and point fingers, but we sure ain't going to blame my dogs for it. My dogs don't chase feathered babies. My dogs, uh, their worst habit is chasing cats around. But uh, they've never caught a cat. 
And I don't think they want to catch a cat. They just enjoy the chase. So anyway, Corny is going to be fine. This is not his first um, dog attack, and it won't be his last, I'm sure. So Mary says, lady, just look at the video. That is something that a lot of people do. They comment before they ever watch the video. They will comment before they watch the video. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all about multiple comments. If you want to comment and comment, multiple comment away. Comments help us a lot. But uh, we're commenting on things before you watch the video. And then when the question is answered in the video, that's kind of ridiculous. Oh, Lord. Come on. Up to here. Oh, boy. I've been discovered by Chrissy. Oh, no. Here comes the other dogs as well. So I left the front door open. Mm. They were all inside in the warm because it's so cold. It's so cold out here. But, um, oh, my goodness. She she must have heard my voice. And, um, oh, hello. And look who else has come to join us. Oh, no. God, I am being joined by all kinds of friends. Hello. Oh, goodness gracious. Don't scratch me in the face, sweetie. Do not scratch me in the face. Do not scratch daddy in the face. Okay, Stella. Daddy's working, sweetie. All right, Christmas. Trixie, I'm working over here, love. This is what I do for work, y'all. They don't like my stop. But... Give me that. Sorry about all of that. What they want to do is join me for my drive over to the J and L property. But it's a rainy day. It's, it's very nasty, and I'm not going to let them go. Ben, my nephew, um, he just washed my truck up a couple of days ago. And even though the outside is going to get dirty because of the rain and the, the mud, the inside is still clean. And I'm going to try to keep that inside clean for as long as I can. And by having these dogs jump out over there, then jump back in, then jump in over here in the mud, I'm not. I'm just not going to do that. They're going to have to watch me drive away today and not go with me. Settle down, girl. Settle down. I think they may have heard me. Oh, boy. Now they're going to try to talk themselves. <sighs> Sorry, everybody. So I bet... You're all wondering, at what point do I get to her survival story? And at what point do I get to this girl's survival story? Oh, baby, come on up. Oh, sweetie. At what point do I get to her survival story? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of stories to go. And don't forget, a lot of the stories are going to be animals that, we, that are still with us today. And some will be from animals that have already passed and crossed that rainbow bridge. Thank you, sweetie. But uh, I'm enjoying working on those videos. I think it's great when people are able to have a one animal focus. The um, videos, I try to make them fairly entertaining. It's always fun to see where an animal came from and, and all of that. And then how long it's been with us. And then watch the animals as they evolve over time and become, you know, something special. And all of our babies do. They're all also special. We also have, Lord, think about the animals who have passed that rainbow bridge. And then in doing that, I have thought to myself, you have to be careful of how far are you willing to go before opening up more criticism on yourself. Think about that for a minute. How far are you willing to go before risking open yourself, opening yourself up to more criticism? Because can you imagine the day that I make the video about Lola and Petunia? And if there's anybody who doesn't know that story, well, you're going to see a, a beautiful video of two pigs that helped each other find themselves into a better life. But the problem is, is how they passed. And then all I already know that what's going to happen is I'm going to have a lot of criticism on the role that I played or the role that I was unable to play to protect them 
from the accident. So, yeah, that that is kind of one of my worries about when I start playing animals who've already passed the Rainbow Bridge. Um, you know, you already know that a lot of animals you lose to predators. Um, some animals you lose to parasites, you know, sickness, uh, disease. Some you lose to accidents. And uh, but I'll tell you what, saying it was an accident is one thing, but you wouldn't believe how many people can come can come at you for your lack of being able to prevent certain things. And so accidents happen all the time. Yes, we know that they happen in your homes. They happen, you know, in the workplace. They happen at school. They happen on farms. OK. But uh, yeah, so I, I will. I am a little bit worried about how I'm going to play those in and what the reaction is going to be to all of those. But there's too many animals. There's too many wonderful animals to not tell the entire story uh, and tell all of their stories. There's some amazing animals out there, y'all. Some that we have now, some that have passed. But all of them have played a role in making I'm a Survivor the channel that it is and the community that we have. So I'll get to it. I just got to figure out how to do it the right way. It's going to take a lot of, I'm going to exhaust a lot of brain cells in trying to figure out the best way to present these videos without taking a beat down. Uh, and I, I will also say this, uh, it's always hard to make any horse video. Man, is it becoming ever more difficult to make any video about horses? I told Jamie, I want you to think, oh no. Christmas is chewing on my glasses. Thank you, Christmas. That would be my glasses. Here would be one lens, and here would be the other. So now they are nothing more than just, yeah. Christmas, here. Might as well go ahead and have some fun. Take the rest of them here. I'm going to actually give these to Christmas. She's already done it now. <laughs> Lord, Lester Morrow. They were in my pocket. She got them out of my pocket when she was jumping up on me, took them off, and there she ate them. Thank God I have a hundred more pair in one of my drawers in my room. Uh, so what I was saying about the horses is, do you remember, this may go back about two years ago, but uh, I was excited when we got Carl. I was so excited when we got Carl. And I think that every video I made for an entire month was about Carl, 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 Carl. And at some point, it got to be where a lot of people were so, well, number one, and don't, don't say I'm making this up. This is, this is not, I'm not making this up. If you were around two years ago, then you'll know this is true. Everybody hated Carl. They hated that bird. They hated that I brought that bird in. Why is this glare not, it is like right down my forehead. I don't like you all seeing that part of the shop, but I can't have that glare anymore. Um, everyone hated Carl. They thought that Carl was the worst thing that I could have ever done to the sanctuary. And there was no excuse for that and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, Carl uh, was an amazing character. King Carl. Thank you to whoever said that. King Carl. Carl, our ostrich was just an amazing addition and but there were so many people that hated carl that we went through a phase of a lot of people refusing to watch any video that had to do with carl so then what i did as kind of a smart ass way of just some of the things that i can sometimes do i begin to make videos and i would purposely completely ignore carl Listen, I would have a video of all of the babies 
and I would go by, and if I saw a car, I would do, do, and, and dip around them. I began to make it to where I wouldn't talk about Carl. I wouldn't show Carl. I wouldn't mention Carl. Carl could be behind me hissing up a storm, hitting the fence, and I refused to acknowledge it. And would you believe that within a couple of weeks, everyone began to ask, hey, where's Carl? Where's Carl? How can we never see Carl? It's a fickle world that we live in, y'all. It is the darndest, most fickle world that we live in. So all I can ask is that don't you become one of those people? Don't you become one of those names that you that you just let your emotions take over every time you go onto a channel and watch the Internet? I've asked you a hundred times, go find your happy place, y'all. There are so many channels out there, and there's a place for everybody. I will say this. There is a place for everybody. If you're somebody who likes controversy and you like conflict and you like arguing in the comments, you do know that there's tons of channels that have nothing but gaslighting videos to create drama and conflict in their videos. And that's what they do. They thrive on that because they know that the more comments the more Facebook and YouTube is going to promote their videos, recommend their videos, the more money they're going to make on their videos. And so they will have people that will purposely create all kinds of drama or say things that are just mind boggling just because they want that engagement. And so if you are that kind of a channel or if you're that kind of a person who loves to engage and you like to fight it out with people in comments and you love to tell them, you know, this and that about themselves, there's channels for you that are like that. But uh, I think that every once in a while you find yourself on a channel, a, a channel, I, I don't want to say a channel with class, but the last thing that we want to do is create and, and add more drama. We would just like to get back to the old way of doing things where we're a happy family, a community, a family, I meaning a social media family. And in every family, there's going to be some drama. There's going to be someone who there will be a habitual liar. There'll be somebody that cannot make a right choice. There'll be somebody who's a know-it-all. Think about your family dynamics. There, in every family, there's somebody who has to be heard. There's somebody who has to, who wants not to be heard. There's there, there the family dynamic is so vast that. Uh, but I think you all know what I'm talking about. And so we're no different here. We are a family. We're a community, and in this community. There are a lot of different kinds of folks, and some are confrontational. There's people at your workplace who are confrontational. There's people at your school who are confrontational. There's people in your family who are confrontational. There's people at your church who are confrontational. And so there's no surprise to run across people over here who are also controversial and and they and they they look for they look for something to get them going and if they find something that they can have as a little bit of fuel then man they're going to start unleashing hell so we are so we're trying hard to get away from that and I told Jamie I think that my next move when I video horses is to simply just look right over them, just go right past them, not mention a name, not mention a nothing uh, because the horse community. Oh, my gosh, y'all. It's something else. Um, Rick, uh, this was funny. This, I'm quoting Mr. Rick. This is not a Lester quote because I don't know horse people, but uh, he joked that uh, somebody could have had a riding lesson when they were two. Or their mom could have put them on their uncle's horse when they were seven. And that makes them automatically a horse person. And now they may not have, they may have never owned a horse or they may have owned a Shetland pony whenever they were a child. And now they are a horse person for life. They know how to horse train. They know the ins and outs and they know everything there is to know about horses. And unfortunately, we, uh, you, you have a lot of those people are your most vocal. They're the most vocal and they may not have anything to stand by. But like Rick said, if you truly 
are a horse person, then make you a channel. And instead of attacking another channel, instead make your channel into a teaching tool. Make your horse channel into a teaching tool to help others. And But those people can't do that because they don't have a horse. And they've not had a horse in 30 years. And they have not had a horse since they were four or whatever. <laughs> I just, I'm not laughing at that. I'm not laughing at that. I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to say that it's been a really rough week on Jamie and on myself trying to still keep a positive outlook in the new year. Yet Satan is hitting us so hard, y'all. Satan is hitting us so hard with things that make us want to revert back to the ways of 2023 and just lash out at everybody. And so we're going to try to take the high road and not do that. But taking that high road is not as easy, you know. So Jeanette says, stop, stop in the name of love. What's going on? Jeanette, I don't know. Jeanette Johansson, what's going on? Are there something happening in the comments that I'm not familiar with? I got two things in my pocket. It's my keychain that I got yesterday and a box cutter. Uh, so I'm not able to read any comments. And then the glasses that I have are the ones with no lens in them. And so this is not going to help me too much. This actually does help quite a bit. Hold on a minute. Well, I can't find it. But um, somebody said, so it was funny that someone accused me of being the one who get the horse people riled up. Hold on a minute. How can I be the one to get the horse people riled up? If in fact, I'm only making a video about the horse, that's the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> so would you rather me never video the horses ever again? Just don't video the horses ever again because they're going to stir controversy. No. See, here's the whole thing. It is not the world's responsibility to tiptoe around the things that trigger you y'all it is not my responsibility to have to tiptoe myself around the things that trigger you there's 5,000 people that we're blessed to have watching the channel right now on, on the different platforms but there's no way that i can find a way to tiptoe around 500 5,000 different people's triggers I can't. I can't walk around 5,000 people's triggers. So what I have to do is stay true to who I am. And then what you have to do is say, whoa, this guy is nothing like me. This guy, Lester, is nothing like me. And I will not be a part of any more of his videos. Instead, I'll go watch and you and you make that decision on your own. And then a second lady says, why do you continually gripe at us? Wait, I didn't know I was griping. I'm a, listen to me right now. When we do a live, we're a bunch of friends sitting around talking. So that's what you do when you, when you join a live, you are inviting your friends to sit down and discuss and have a, have a conversation with you the same way if we were having tea or coffee or a beer at a bar or a restaurant or a roadside cafe. We're talking like friends. And so this particular live is a chance for me to talk and get some things off my chest and vent. And so the way you talk back with me is 
through the comments, obviously. We chit-chat. We're having a discussion, a friendly conversation. And in my, in my mind today, I'm telling you some of the hardships of the week. I'm talking about how you wanted to get off this new year with a good, solid, positive start. And it has been nothing but riddled with a lot of pee pats, uh, negative Nancy's or negative Nellie's or whatever you want to call it. Who's bashing just straight up bashing Jamie uh, for some things that she has done. That's some mistakes that she's made. And then even coming at <laughs> me in the Cornholio video. So, wow, y'all, what I'm trying to say is we're all sitting here talking and I would rather talk through the issues than avoid them because if we talk through them, maybe you'll better understand my perspective and maybe I can better understand yours. And then ultimately, if you cannot conflict resolution your way into finding a, a medium where you can both meet in the middle and compromise on some things, then at that point you have to decide to, you know what, I'm going to spend less time here or I'm going to spend less time here. I'm going to spend less time here. And that's when we say you go find your happy place, but go find your happy place because finding your happy place if you're if you are in fact one of the negative people who who look for controversy and you look you know to get yourself riled up your happy place is somewhere else it's not here hold on i have not seen this young lady in a while and i'm going to see what she said bailey i missed you where have you been god forbid you let your humanness show Goodness gracious. <laughs> Wait, what humanness? I'm a robot, Bailey. I'm a robot of a man. I have no emotions. I have no feelings. I am just a robot of a human. I just sit there every day and make videos. What's the next video? Oh, video. What's the video? Oh, too long. Cut it down to size. I'm only allowed three minutes on this video. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, I will give shout out to Ellie and Megan. AI Lester, AI Lester. Megan was out that door in a heartbeat. Watch this again. Hey folks, Lester here. And uh, today I'm hanging out with the great Cornholio. And I just want to put... So the dogs came around the backside of the barn. This is where Ellie's camera first picked up the dogs. Here's Cornholio. I know you can't see my mouse, but he's right there in the center of your screen, right there in front of the barn where he normally hangs out. The dogs are up circling around. This out there, I'm and going to say here that of all of the survivors. Cornholio goes around the front side of, that's the little white car is the one that belongs to Lex. Who we've been blessed to work with. And then he comes back around the back side. And try to care for. And of course they're both still bar. after him. He is they grabbed right. feathers right over there. They they grabbed a a, a mouthful of feathers Far. over there. And this is my opinion. Luckily, he, right here, Cornholio begins to try to take flight. He begins to try to take flight. He is by far. And the they grabbed a whole another mouthful of feathers right there. The ultimate survivor. And when I say ultimate survivor, they go into the front yard. Here they are. You can see them on the bottom of your screen. This is Cornholio in the front yard now. Uh, the uh, the dog is still on his tail. Not only and has he had to survive right there. So now Megan has something stacked on the porch right there. It's what you can't see. But right behind what looks like a clothes hamper, a white basket of something, uh, that's where they finally catch Cornholio, and that's where he's pinned down. That's where he would have died. That right there is where he would have died. And then look how fast this is in real time. Vicious dog attacks. And I say that in the plural because he has. And so as you can see right there, when Megan come out and screamed, and I'm going to guess and say that was probably maybe three to five seconds from the time they actually caught Cornholio. Um, I don't know for a fact, but uh, I'm just going to guess that the camera's recordings in the back were maybe... 30 seconds. I didn't, I didn't 
the time I'm on here. But I'm going to guess maybe 30 seconds. And then here in the front yard, another few seconds before Megan comes out. And she shoots She's also had to Cornholio. survive. If you watch, Cornholio runs away. Heart break. So there what? goes Cornholio. Here comes L.E. L.E. had gone out the side door. And L.E. has his rifle. He's walking around the front of the Boss. house with his gun. And so uh, the dogs are friendly, y'all. The dogs actually right there walk up to L.E. and Megan. The dogs actually leave Cornholio alone. And the dogs walk up to Ellie and Megan looking for love or something. So many other uh, things. Ellie and, refused uh, to accept he's had that to love. Undergo Instead, he screamed and, and hollered. So and so much over there, you see the dog life. leaving. More and then Ellie tried to shoo the dog away by just stomping towards it to shoo it back home. So that is um, a lot. You can commend Ellie and Megan. And for as much negativity as those two have taken this year, my God, for as much hate and negativity as those two have taken this year, um, I'll tell you what, if that wasn't proof that they're actually do a little bit better job than what you guys give them credit for. And I say you guys loosely. I know it's not all of you. Maybe I have gone on to quite the little rant session. Uh, defending Ellie and Megan for saving Cornholio is not wrong. Defending Ellie and Megan for doing a damn good job and being there, being present when all of that went down is what should happen. That is what should be the number one comment today is not being mad about this, not being upset about this, not blaming Lester for this, not demanding this of, you know, instead it should be shout outs to those who saved that little guy's life. If you love Cornholio the same way you love that baby on the street, you love that dog, you love that elderly person crossing the road, guess what? You see somebody come out and save a life that's the ones who should be held the hero. But look how twisted everybody is. Look in the comments right now. Read your comments of how twisted. There's nothing but hate and anger being spewed left and right. Some are mad at this person. Some are mad at that person. Some are blaming me. <laughs> Instead, where do we get off not hailing our heroes, y'all? That's, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. That's the problem in a nutshell. And I'm not on a rant. I'm not on a rant. I'll tell you what. I loved on my son yesterday. And I told him again and again and again how proud I am of the work that they're doing at I'm a Survivor. Again and again and again. And do you know that Megan, I love her. Uh, Megan, Ellie's fiance, guys, she refuses to sleep at night. Re I'm telling you something. She may have told you. This. I don't know if she does or not. I don't know. I don't watch every video. But uh, Megan will refuse to fall asleep at night because she's so vigilant of what's going on around the, the barnyards. She won't sleep. She will not sleep at night because she's so concerned of what she may sleep through. And she's so worried about what she may sleep through. And I'll be the first to admit that I have slept through plenty of things that I wish I was awake for. But at the same time, I'm not going to stay awake all night out of fear of what I may end up missing when it comes to the animal safety. Kudos to Megan. And anybody with that kind of dedication and love to sacrifice your sleep and stay awake just to keep an eye on the walk from door to door, listening and looking to keep animals safe. So, yeah, there's a lot of folks. I mean, think about it for a minute. Uh, I'm a survivor. Whenever we made the video and we talked about how Jamie and I are going to go ahead and take up residence here at Longhorn Lester's. I'm a survivor, lost 2,000 people that day. I'm a survivor. We lost 2,000 people after I made that video. That's 2,000 people that completely left. They left a channel that they'd been following for maybe years. 
they left a channel that included your Ringos, your Pictrudis, your Imogene. They left the channel that had all of these animals, the rescues that had been brought in. They left a channel and they said, I'll no longer watch anything that has to do with any of those animals because I'm not going to watch a video that doesn't have Lester or Jamie, or I'm not going to watch a video that has Ellie or Megan. What kind of hate is that? And what kind of back ass way of thinking is that? That means to me, you never loved Ringo. You never loved Pig Trudy. You never loved that big galoot we call Moo. You never loved the damn one of them as much as you claim that you did. Because the day that we say we're letting my son move into the house and start helping out at the sanctuary was the day that you said, hey, I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. I get emails all the time now saying how they miss us at I'm a survivor. And I'm like the F I don't say the word, but I'm like the F I'm there. I'm there several days a week. And if you haven't noticed, I still make I'm a survivor videos even without living there. But you wouldn't know that because you up and left the channel. Because you were so I'm not going to watch it if it's not Lester and Jamie doing the videos. Then you never loved the animals in the first place. Don't pretend that you did. Or if you did, you would still love the animals despite who's videoing what they're doing on any particular day. <sighs> oh, maybe I have turned this into an entire rant session. Maybe I have made this into a rant, but it broke my heart. It broke my heart for the animals. It broke my heart that you don't realize that when you leave a channel, you actually are saying a lot. It's just kind of like getting up and walking out of a meeting. I was a teacher for a while. Uh, you already know that 25 years I spent in the classroom and sometimes um, there were certain presenters and we would, people would get up very rudely and walk out of a meeting because you didn't care to hear what that presenter had to say. If they were doing a session on something and you didn't want to be a part of that session, you would not show up. And so as the presenter, you're looking around and you like, wait, there's like nobody here. And those kind of things are very hurtful. And so if you don't like the certain style that a video creator gives you, if you don't like the, the stories or the way they tell the stories, then I understand that. But just to up and leave the complete channel and say goodbye to I'm a server forever because you didn't like the fact that Lester gave his son a piece of his inheritance. I don't know. I don't get it. Well, anyway, listen, I uh, guess I've already exceeded my hour, and I'm sorry. I don't think that I really addressed much of anything at all, but we did talk as friends. I got a lot off of my chest, and that meant that means a lot to me to be able to have someone there to listen. And you don't have to agree with me. I'll read some comments later to find out if you do or if you don't. <laughs> I'm not going to go by and block and ban you. If you don't agree with me, the only reason that we've told the moderator uh, and Jamie and I will block, block and ban is if you are literally looking to incite anger. If you're trying to start trouble with somebody, if you if you don't know how to conversate with someone like an adult and there's people on here that that do not know how to behave themselves like an adult some people say if you have nothing nice to say don't say it at all but that's what you don't even have to do that if you have something you don't agree with you're welcome to say it you're welcome to say it here's an example here's an example the lady this morning said i don't understand how you can sit there and say that cornholio's future seems uh, bleak. Instead, you should do something about it and give him a bright future. Give him hope for a future. Okay. So when I read that comment, okay, so she and I 
agree on the fact that we would like Cornholio to have a wonderful future, but we don't necessarily know how to go about doing that. I said in my video, I'm not going to put him in a cage. I will not cage that turkey. I'm not going to. And I'm not going to clip his wings because I feel like by doing those things, I'm going to limit him on his ability to escape from danger. Be that danger be a dog or a raccoon or a possum or a skunk or a feral hog. I'm not going to limit him on his ability to escape. So the so we we don't know. We we have a disagreement. We we don't know exactly what to do. But I'm not going to de delete and ban the lady and block her from my life, y'all. <laughs> She's open and welcome to have her comments. Um, the people that get blocked and banned are the ones that say things like what happened to Jamie this week of the fact that you know nothing about what you're doing. You are, you're a city girl who's pretending to be country. You are the reason that, you know, this and that. And uh, or the ones that can attack you based on your physical appearance, the ones that attack you based on, oh, there's just so many things. So what are y'all thinking? Let's take some questions now, shall we? Let's go ahead and take some questions. I feel like I've rambled on the whole time. I'm going to go read some stuff. Audacity was on sale all of 2023. I hope inflation causes people to not be able to afford it this year. <laughs> uh, CJS underscore way on YouTube. That's a YouTube channel. Yes, absolutely. Audacity was at an all time high in 2023. But I do think that it was because a lot of us allowed it. A lot of us asked for it. So. Um, I'm trying to capture this one comment because it's funny. And I want to talk about it. Here it is. Nancy Winslow says, have you used your new saddle? No, I haven't. And here's why. Um, Jamie put the saddle on to voodoo. And I think that you all know the way he reacted to having a saddle on his back. I saw a video where Courtney put a saddle on uh, Brienne's horse, Barbie. And I watched the way Barbie reacted to having a new saddle on her back. So here's what I think I'm going to have to do. I think that what I'm going to have to do is take voodoo and lunge him first. Give him a nice, good workout of lunging. Get him to calm down a little bit and relax. Then I will put the saddle on him while he's still in the, the lunging ring. The round pen, they call it. And then I'll get him used to lunging with the saddle. And then maybe, and I say maybe, this is a big maybe, at that point, I will try to climb on with that saddle. But um, I think that horses might be used to certain saddles and certain fits. There have been some saddles that we've never had a problem with voodoo jumping around on. But uh, we've had other saddles, the Australian saddle, for example, which makes him go bananas. And I don't know why he's never done good with the Australian saddle, even though it's our nicest saddle. It's the most expensive saddle. So now the one that Jamie got me is obviously a very nice saddle, and I want to use it. And Voodoo is the horse that I prefer to ride when I ride. I don't ride every day, y'all. You have to remember that. I don't ride every week or even every month. I am more of a casual rider, so I know that that's not the best thing to do. Uh, you can't just show up with some horses and just jump on them for the first time in six months. That's not very smart. So I'm going to have to ease him into that saddle and ease him into having me on his back with that saddle. 
I just do not want to take a fall, y'all. I've taken too many falls off of him. I do not want to take a fall. I'm getting too old to keep having to recover from the aches and pains of being thrown off of a horse. So to answer your question, no, I have not used my new saddle. Uh, what's today's date? Is to, today's Friday. Uh, I don't know this for a fact, but maybe Saturday tomorrow. Uh, if not Saturday, maybe Sunday, I can get Uriel to come over and help me a little bit with the saddle. I want to make sure it's pretty weather. And then uh, if I can get the saddle on, get him uh, lunged, and then um, maybe work myself on him, I will try that. I'm, oh, sorry. I'm excited about doing it but I just don't know exactly what day that's going to happen on. Get back, girls. The girls have come to me again, ready to go. No, no, no. So, uh, no, Uriel has a full-time job, everybody. Uriel works full-time. Uriel helps out when he's available. Um, I pay Uriel the same thing I paid Jake, and I paid Ben. Uh, $25 an hour. That's the same thing I paid Sister Kim. The same thing I paid everybody who's worked for I'm a Survivor has always made the same dollar amount. It was amount that Jamie and I agreed on back when we first started the sanctuary, knowing that we, we were able to have employees, but uh, we wanted to make it consistent across the board. And so obviously the more hours you want to work, the more money you can make. Pretty much, I will say this, though, that every employee who's worked for us has worked just long enough to pay their most recent bill, and then they're off doing their own thing. It's hard to find anybody who wants to work a full eight-hour day, even though an eight-hour day would give somebody $200. That was the video I made this morning on Longhorn Lester channel. It's crazy to me how $200... Is still a lot of money. What's wrong with me? Or where have I been? If in my mind, I still think that $200 or $25 an hour is still good money. There's people that were on my behind. Uh, and here's, here's an example. The truck. Let's take the truck. I didn't delete or block or ban anybody, y'all. Hey, Susie. Susie Gilbert's here. Susie goes, I'd work there if I was closer. So Ben did. He washed my truck both inside and out. And I said in that video that it will probably take him at least two hours. So you're saying, okay, so Ben got paid 50 bucks to wash your truck inside and out. And I say, well, I look at it as Ben earned $50 from two hours of work. Two hours of work made him $50. The work just so happened to be my truck. But there's people who's going to say, Lester, if you took that same truck to have it detailed, they would have charged you $300 for a truck that size. So you are shafting Ben. You are screwing Ben out of money. And I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm not the enemy here. I'm not the enemy here. You're right on one hand. If I was to take that truck, I mean, and I mean the big truck. If I took the big truck to have it detailed somewhere, they probably would charge me $300, y'all. Maybe more. I don't know what those kind of folks charge. But I pay by the hour. And so if Ben spends two hours, be it the truck be it Jamie's car, be it cleaning up, raking leaves from the yard. I pay by the hour. I don't pay by the job necessarily. So I'm sorry. I still think that $25 an hour is a good wage. I don't know what part of the country you live in where that's not enough money. Or, or is it the part of the country you live in to where the they are they are brain they're um they're trying to convince you through brainwashing that you have to stop working for the man you must stop working for the man why should you work for this much when he's making this much and i get it i understand that i've heard that 
whole thing from the woke inside. And I understand that I think it's probably the West Coast mentality of everyone saying, stop giving to the man. You're making the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poor. $25 is a lot of money. $25 is a lot of money. I don't know where you live where $25 is not a lot of money. But talking to Ben, where he used to make $8 an hour, and then he made $12 an hour at jobs where he had a boss who was screaming and hollering in his ear, he's happy with $25 an hour. So let him be happy. Let him come over here and work a few hours and make as much money as he needs, and off he goes. And then I'll say one last thing. If Ben was not making enough money, then guess what? He would be back today, or he'd be back tomorrow, or he'd be back the next day, and he would continue to work to make whatever money he needs to make, which is the adult thing to do. Because as adults, we work to pay bills, right? And so Ben works whenever Ben needs a few dollars. Done. Done. And then I'll say one last thing, and then I promise I'll let you go. I still have a very large audience, so I don't guess you're completely tired of me. But it was the same thing whenever Jake worked for me or with Uriel working on occasion. Um, if you don't think that $25 an hour is enough to put you where you want to be, then Jake could have, by all means, gone back to selling mobile homes, which is what he was doing when I offered him employment. And I can promise you one thing, him working with his Uncle Lester, making $25 an hour was a hundred times better than him working all day at a used mobile home lot, not making any money unless he sold a home unless he sold a home and then with Uriel, you know, he spends, she, I bet he spends 12 hours a day doing what he does. They're on those tractors from the time the sun comes up till the sun goes down. And I guarantee you that he shows up and he's getting $25 an hour for fun work. When I say fun, I mean, cleaning some horse hooves, brushing some horses, giving them a bath, putting a saddle on, riding them around for a little bit. Uh, just working with them. If I was a younger man, I would take that job in a heartbeat and I would be there every single day and I would work in a full eight hours a day. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I'm seeing everyone over here in the comments who make a lot less than that. And I tell you what, y'all, I don't know exactly how we can be so divided on what is and what is not a good salary. Last thing is, you know, Ben and Jake both have a channel. And so they've been able to get content for their channel from their going to work every day. Uh, so not only is the work giving them a salary, but the work is giving them chances to grab content. And so the content from Ben's channel has been today. I'm, gonna, I'm at Uncle Lester's. I'm going to be doing this and this and this and this. Or Jake's channel when he was working with me was today I'm doing this and this and this and this. And so you're getting hit. Not only are you able to build your channel by the work that you're doing, but you're all it's like building your resume, but you're also making some money while you do it. So it was a, it was a, it was, it was great for them. And I don't understand how that could all of a sudden be such a horrible, horrible thing that people had made great controversy out of. Uh, so there might be a north and a south kind of a thing. Someone just said in the north, salaries are generally higher than in the south. The north may pay more than the south. I did not know that, y'all. Uh, I did not know that, but uh, I will say that Jamie's son, Xander, is a union employee, but he's still an apprentice. And he barely makes $25 an hour up north as an apprentice. So all I'm going to say is that don't for a minute think that Jake or Uriel or Ben or anyone else is at 
expert master level of any job around the farm. They are all apprentices and they all work for Lester when they want to have a few extra dollars to be made. And that's how it's going to be. So for the lady who makes $52 an hour, you're good. You're good. But we ain't there. We are not there yet. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I will say this. This is true. Employees do have a choice on where they work and how much they work for. So instead of you all getting twisted about it, uh, why don't we uh, just allow them to work where they want to work? All right. No, Jake does not have a job. Jake's job is making videos. Jake runs his own farm. Oh, Lord. Newbie. We have a newbie. Uh, Jake does not work at I'm a Survivor, and he has not worked here for about a year. Jake has his own farm, and he makes his own money making videos on his farm. Same as Brienne. I'm trying to answer questions uh, as I see them. So someone says $25 an hour is an awesome salary, even in Maine or Mass M.A., Massachusetts. Massachusetts or Maine? Where's M.A.? So here's is interesting. Michelle says, so what are you and Jamie doing this weekend? So Jamie has um, a lot of things coming up in her future. Lots of traveling. It's the new year. Her boss is getting ready to get everyone. Thank you, Massachusetts. M.A. is Massachusetts. So uh, Jamie has a lot of traveling coming up. She is going to be getting as much video as she can to make sure she has things to play on her channel while she is traveling. Um, so that's what she's doing. And then I'm not doing anything in particular, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, Lex is still here with me. So, uh, I'll do stuff with Lex. Um, nothing major y'all, nothing major. Thank you for that question. Uh, when do you think Tilly will deliver? So I'm pretty sure that Tilly will not deliver until... Uh, you could actually calculate it. So we already know that even though we thought that she might have been pregnant from one of Brianne's goats, we're pretty sure that she's pregnant now from Gus Gus, the little uh, feigning goat. And so if anyone can find the date of when Gus Gus first arrived at the sanctuary, in that same video, I'm pretty sure he took he went right to work and he impregnated Tilly. And now I'm going to say 186 days, but I don't know it to be a fact. Let me look that up real fast. How long is a goat pregnant for? 150 days. 150 days is the germinate, the gestation period for a goat. It's actually between 145 and 150, 155, so we can average 155 days. So if anyone can find out what day Gus Gus arrived, I'm pretty sure I saw him get to work on her right away. And that means we're looking at about 150 days from that date. I've not looked up that date. Someone says Tilly should be due on January the 14th. Is that right? Is that correct? Where did I see that at? It went by so darn fast. Tilly is due on January the 14th, according to someone who calculated Jamie shared that on Tuesday. Okay, thank you, Jamie, for sharing that. And thank you for sharing that with all of us. Good. All right. Well, hmm. I don't see any more questions coming up. I'm trying to find questions only. Uh, thank you for loving the Survivor Series videos. I'm going to keep those up uh, for the month of January. 
Uh, and even if it doesn't do what I had hoped to bring back a revival to the page, I will at least say I hope it's doing uh, its job in letting those people who've come around in the last couple of years get to know some of the backstories of all the babies. And uh, it'll kind of catch everybody up. And it'll be a resource we can always go back to to find out who's who and what's what. Uh, we'll have those in video forms. And, you know, those babies will not last forever. So having the Survivor Series out there is going to be a great way to memorialize them whenever they are gone, which we hope will not be anytime soon. But we have a lot of animals to go still. I'm going to try, I think, to do all of the animals that are living first, and then we will find a way to talk about those who've already passed. Because I think that there's a lot of really neat characters who've already passed whose stories deserve to be told. And the hard part about that will be finding the video content. Um, so, anywho. Well, I will say that it's been a pleasure. I hear Jamie out doing something. I don't know what she's up to, hollering and yelling about something. <laughs> Who was your first rescue? Oh, Lord. Nancy, thank you. That's not what I was looking for right now, though. So I will let the internet answer this over here for you. Everybody, who was the first rescue? Let's help Barbara and tell her who our very first rescue was. And this would have happened right after Hurricane Harvey. Who can figure this out? And Eddie Hermy says... Ringo. Ringo was the very first rescue, and you are correct. And if you did not get that right, how come you didn't watch my Ringo video? Because I said it in my Ringo video. I did. That was in our, ring, our Ringo video, and I said that. it was Ringo was our very first rescue. Um, come on, y'all. You're not even watching the darn videos. You're like, oh, good. I'm loving the series, Lester, yet I'm not going to watch them because I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh lord it was ringo so all right friends well i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go i've been on here for a lot longer than i should have i don't want to anger the powers that be i want to let you know how much we appreciate you and how much we love you even if we have differing opinions and once again when you get onto a live uh there's no way that we're going to get on here and just gripe 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 i'm not one of your parents and it's not my job to put my finger in your face and tell you that you're going to follow my rules or i'm kicking you out of the house and all of that kind of stuff what i'm trying to do is be more like your youth pastor and let you know that it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to question it's okay to you know to wonder and to be curious about stuff it's okay to disagree it's okay to question did i already say that and uh but together we're going to peacefully figure out what we can do to make this a happy place for everybody not just the animals but also all of us as survivors so in saying so i'm going to go ahead and let you go with that one thank you all so much for watching uh we will be over at the j and l ranch I'd say the next couple of hours. And so we'll be going live from there again. So if you want to see a live uh, from the JNL, I've also made that part of my New Year's resolutions to do a whole lot more live on site. It's hard to do it from any other property. We tried it here and it didn't really work out because I kept losing my signal. I tried it at I'm a Survivor. It didn't work out because I kept losing my signal. So the only property that has internet strong enough to allow me to go live uh, is the JNL. So if you enjoy the Longhorns and you enjoy little Gary, then absolutely, friends. Um, 
absolutely join us over there. Uh, there's one question over here that I will go ahead and answer. Um, now, the timing of it, the timing is still questionable. But uh, the the sweet lady says, so what are the plans with the horses in the long term? And uh, I will say it's complicated. It's complicated. Here's what complicates everything. You ready to hear this? Okay. I'm a survivor sanctuary is set up. It's the best setup to accommodate the horses right now. It has the better grass. It has the, the facilities, meaning they all have their very own stalls. We have the round pen. We have the shelter. We have, well, obviously fresh water. We have the berms built around the ponds for in case we have flooding. And if for some reason... Uh, so as of right now, the horses, along with the donkeys and that sweet little alpaca, Indy, uh, they are better off at the sanctuary. But here's the downfall. At the sanctuary, that means that Jamie, who prefers to spend time with the horses, is not able to be there as often. Now, I go over there several times a week, but I do not spend the same time with horses as what Jamie would like to. So in saying so, I think that the best fit for the horses for the long term would be to have them at this property, which is Longhorn Lester's. What we have in place is we do have a barn that has eight stalls. However, those stalls are set up more for cows, not for horses. It was built for cows. So that would mean we'd have to do some alter, uh, altering of our stalls. Also, the grass here is not an established grass. It's a winter grass, which has a lot of sugar content. And so you have to be very careful of how much grazing your horses do here, or else you can give them issues with their, with their tummies, uh, which leads to other issues with their hooves and all of those kind of things. So that makes it complicated. It would make it easier for Jamie to walk out during her breaks, uh, after work, before work, and work with her horses and spend time with her horses. And that's what she wants to do when she has to put blankets on them or take the blankets off. Um, but I just don't know if we are ready for that yet. The J&L Ranch property has nowhere near the shelter that we would need for horses. It does have the large barn for the cows. We are able to store a little bit of hay there. And we have a feed room, a tack room. We also have pastures uh, that we've made sure are able to accommodate our longhorns. But uh, if we were to try to move the horses over there, Jamie would be in the same predicament. Instead of Jamie having to go to I'm a Survivor, she would be driving to the JNL. And she still has no stalls. She has no round pen. She has none of those things that she would like to have to accommodate her horses. So I do think, and this is just me thinking out loud, I think that the long term is going to be the Longhorns will stay at the JNL property. Jamie will eventually get her horses over here to this property. And as far as what we will end up doing with that back pasture at I'm a Survivor, that is still up in the air. I talked yesterday about the possibility of maybe sending little Gary over there. Hey, sweetie. But uh, we don't know that for a fact. We don't want to have issues with little Gary getting into having problems with Moses and all of them. But uh, don't forget that a pasture has to be maintained, y'all. And if we take all of our animals off the back pasture at I'm a Survivor, all that's going to happen is it's going to grow up into a jungle again. 
and we've already had that property cleared. We have all those large trees taken down. We have grass that we're trying to get to grow. And so we need that to happen, but you also need animals to help maintain that. So no matter what, there's going to have to be some fencing done, but we'll figure it all out. And as we do, we'll bring you along on all of those journeys. All right. I can promise you that. So uh, Chris says, little Gary needs to stay at J and L ranch. So Chris, the only problem with that is that little Gary's fine for now because he's not getting around that, that great. Uh, but eventually he will be getting around a lot better and he will always more than likely have a little bit of an issue with that back leg. We don't want to see him beat up and bullied and picked on. And no matter if, if it's a male or a female, a bull or a cow heifer, uh, you already saw from what, uh, um, Charlene did that he's not ready to stand up on his own feet and protect himself yet. And he may never be able to do that. Now, can we have him castrated and let him graze alongside the other cows? Absolutely. But will he also be pushed off of the grain every time we put food out? More than likely. I don't think that you know exactly how mean they can be to someone who's not their own. I mean, they can be mean to each other. Imagine a lame bull being over there. And uh, and we don't want to see that happen. We don't want to see him being picked on. But like, once again, we're in no rush for any of that. We're only thinking out loud. Ultimately, we'll do the right thing. And if we make a mistake, then we'll reshift and we'll realign and we'll gather ourselves together and take an assessment of what's working and what's not working. And we'll do it again and we'll figure out a way to where all the babies are hopefully um, living their best lives. That's that's our ultimate goal is that all of the babies are able to live their best life. And so how does that happen? It's. I don't know. You'd, sometimes it's trial and error. You ready? I have to go now. I'm being summoned by my boss. Thank you all for watching. We love you so very much. We're blessed to have you. And I did not mean for this to come off as a rant session. It's just friends chit-chatting and talking amongst each other. I do hope that you have people you can confide in and talk to when you need to. And I'm sorry to say that you are my people. You're mine. And you are my go-to. So... You're stuck with me. You're stuck with me. Okay. I will see you in about an hour or so at the JNL property. I have to swing by a tractor supply and get some feed. And uh, I will see you guys over there. Thank you for watching. We love you so much. And uh, that video uh, at the JNL will be on I'm a Survivor uh, Facebook. We're trying to, like I said, we're trying to rejuvenate the page. We're trying to rejuvenate. I'm a survivor. Bring it back alive. And before you say, you don't have any rescues over there. Why are we watching a rescue? Well, we have Gary, y'all. We have Gary. He's a rescue. And I'm a survivor is a whole lot more than just rescues, right? I'm the biggest rescue of them all, everybody. I am the biggest rescue of them all. Hey, maybe I should make a video about myself. Maybe I should include myself in the Survivor Series. Woo I get to be the director of my own documentary. How much fun can that be? Oh. <laughs> we love you. And we'll catch you guys later, okay? Thank you all for loving us.